church really is God built. You know, remember in the book Real Covenant when uh, David wanted to build God a house. Remember that? David had rest from all of his enemies. He got to a place where he rested. And once he found rest, he said, you know what? He said, uh, I need to find me a place to build God a house. He was living in a nice house. But God's house looked like a little old, you know, little, you know, little tent. He wanted to build God a house, but in actuality, God did not have a problem with being in a tent because God always likes a moving thing. If it's dead, he ain't going to be there. Remember now, the church of Jesus Christ was not built on uh, truth. It was built on revelation. Who do men say that I am? Some say you're Simon by Jonah. Some say it is. All right, that's fine. Who you say? Thou art the Christ, son of the living God. Jesus said flesh and blood didn't reveal that to you. But my father is upon this rock. What rock? The rock of revelation. I'm going to build my church. Remember, truth is wonderful. But truth is where God has been. Revelation is where God is going. And a lot of people are very in tune with what God said, but they don't know what he's saying. You do know that Isaac, Abraham would have destroyed his promise had he built and made a move on truth. Because the truth was, God did say, go kill your only son, Isaac. Wasn't that the truth? Wasn't that a word from the Lord? But had he not heard God in the middle of what God told him to do, what God said, God changed it to something else. And sometimes you can be so stuck with what God told you that you don't know what he's saying right now. Man shall not live by, but every word that proceed death out of the mouth of God. Look at somebody and say, he's still talking. Tell somebody on the left and the right, he's still talking. Of course, we have been here. The first preach that abundant life. And we came here. We reached out to this wonderful pastor here at this church, Progressive Baptist Church. He completely opened up this facility to us. I want to say this to you. Y'all that know me know. If you have any connection to Prophet Khan, any connection with Prophet Khan brings warfare. That's a fact. Because a lot of folk don't like me. I never met them, but they just don't like me. But always remember that people don't shoot at small stuff. If an ant was on the ground, you wouldn't take out a nine millimeter and shoot an ant. He's too small. When people shoot at you, that's a sign that you're big. Can you imagine the persecution that came with walking with Jesus? At the time that Jesus came with the religion called followers of the way, the major religion was Judaism. Jesus was considered at that time a cult. Because the major religion had under the thousand people. Here go Jesus got you to 12 little boys. By the way, y'all keep thinking these are old men. These are teenagers. Running around with Jesus. 24 hours a day. You know they call them homosexual. They call them a gay. That boy. I ain't never seen no man seen a whole bunch of men around him like that. But these men was able to turn cities upside down. They cast out devils and laid hands on the sick. Isn't that right? Well, I want to say this to you that I'm eternally Whatever persecution you may have come through, KCC, you have stood by your pastor. You have loved me with an everlasting love. And I don't take that for granted. Because how many people know people don't have to be nice to you? We reached out to this church. We asked them, can we use this church? They gave a total liberty of the church. I told you they didn't charge us no money. I mean, it was money, but it wasn't no money. It was a 
left here, okay? I think I expressed to y'all the night even what it was. The other church we was at, we were paying the mortgage. They depressed. They got depressed when we left. Amen. They depressed. They depressed. But this church came. Amen. And they gave us our healing, opened up a cure. Pastor, I don't know if you know him, Pastor Kelly, or you can never contact me, Barbara. But every issue, you know, she had fixed it. We did everything. I told the pastor, I was getting ready to go on vacation. I said, Pastor, this church ain't got money enough to come in and come be a part of it. And I wanted KCC to let him know how appreciative we are for letting us use. Come on. Come on, y'all. Y'all can do better. Come here, Pastor. You know, people don't have to let you use their house. So he was good to us. Let us use the kitchen, the furniture, all. He gave us a key. Everything. You know, these Baptist folks, you know, you have to go through the deacons and stuff. You understand? A little different from us Pentecostals. You understand? But they, they, they let us in and was good to us and was very faithful unto us. I made a personal donation to him. We are grateful for what he has done. We know that the key to longevity is God. Can we make sure? I want y'all to shout and give him a thunderous applause. Come on, y'all. Come on. you a fruit basket. Amen. Take that from it. Keep going, Miss Diamond. Amen. And I believe a card came from the mother's board and from in the church. Mother to the wife. Yes. Yeah, all that. And then checks. Praise God. And we are grateful. I just want him to talk to us. Really, he was real nice to us, y'all. I mean, we didn't have no problems. This, this, was our, this, this was our church on Sundays and Tuesdays. Can we one more time give him a great big God bless you? Um, Greetings, my KCC family. <laughs> and I do say family because we all have the same father. We were grateful to be a blessing to you because I know what it's like to be in transition. I've been on both sides of the church fence. I've been on the planting side and the established side. But let me just say I bid you Godspeed. My prayer for KCC is the Lord will give the people a spirit of obedience that you will stay connected and in covenant with God and your pastor, that the infectious, fervent spirit of evangelism overtake you all, and that you walk in righteousness and love, that the glow of the Lord will shine through you. Secondly, I want to share this story as I take my exit. When I first met your pastor, I talked to a couple of people, and I told him, the Lord told me to pray for that young brother's protection. I didn't tell him until today because he needed to know now that he has a brother praying for him. I got into my first fight when I was seven years old over my little sister and I was fighting a bully because I had to protect my little sister. I met him just about a year ago. He's my little brother. 
What he does not know is I have my fight clothes on on his behalf. We're praying for your protection, my brother. Come on, let's give him a great big God bless you. Hey. Amen. We thank God for him. If there's anything that KCC can ever do for you, we'll come in here and pack the church out. But we are excited about what God is doing. Look at three people around you and tell them, before this month is out, God going to throw you a party. Where my daddy at? Hey, dad, where my daddy? Oh, hey, come on, daddy. Let me make sure I honor you. It's his birthday today, y'all. You know. Amen. Amen. How you doing? You know, my daddy's birthday and President Obama's birthday is the same day. They were born on the same day, the same year. So he said that he was supposed to be the president. But you know, he said them drugs got him. Them drugs got him. He said, we had them drugs and I got I was going to be the president. So listen, y'all. Y'all make sure today so I don't have to do it. You know, I'm going to do what I got to do, you know. But please make sure y'all give him a Pentecostal handshake. Put some money in his hand so he can leave me alone. Bless him real good, and I promise you, whenever you ain't got no seat, he gonna make sure he find one for you. Okay. Amen. Let's give him some money. Amen. Amen. All right, we got announcements. I do them. I do them. I do them. Yeah, brother. What's that? Make sure you download my single. Now listen, next week, well this week, this week is uh, convocation, y'all. Convocation. <laughs> Look at 3B Ryan and say, I'm going to be looking for you. I'm going to be looking for you. I'm gonna... Okay. Convocation is this week. Of course, we're having to have it at the church in Huntersville. It's going to be an absolutely awesome meeting. The power of God is going to show up. There's going to be great demonstration. I want you to do me a favor because during uh, convocation, we're going to have a wonderful time in God. Y'all believe that? Well, my whole CD will be coming out at convocation. That's the hard case. Now, look, I'm not going to release it digitally yet. That'll be another about three weeks. But the hard case CD will be available this week, it's exclusive. We're going to be the first ones to get it. We'll be the only ones to get it. And there's something that's going to be on that CD that will be on no other CDs, okay? So I want you to make sure you get them. They're only going to be $10, all right? Get the CD. It's going to be a wonderful CD. You're going to shout. You're going to fall out. You're going to wear it out. Say amen. It's going to be an awesome CD, so we're excited about that. Convocation is getting ready to be. So guess what? Now, on Wednesday... Bishop Pitts called me, said, well, he called me, he called Sister Joy, and then I sent him a text message that went out to him, and he told him, you're going to be calling her, you call me. Anyway, so he was supposed to do our first night of the convocation. His son just came in from Australia. He said that he can stay there with his son. I told him to go ahead and stay there with his son, do that little CD. But in his place, we're going to have Bishop Leo Lewis from Alabama. So that'll be on Wednesday night. Now, scheduled to be here on Saturday, and of course, he has been having some challenges with his health. I did speak to him today. He said he's doing everything he can to get better. However, 
it is not Joan Saturday right before I got in here. I had a conversation with Archbishop Duncan Williams. And we're going to try to get him here on Saturday. So we're working that out. So whatever we got to do, we're going to have a good time at convocation. Amen. I said, we're going to have a good time at convocation. Say amen. All right. Our official service on Sunday, of course, is not at Huntersville. It's going to be at the Sheraton Charlotte Airport. All right. So on Sunday, we're going to be at the Huntersville location. We're going to be at the Sheraton. And everybody's wearing what? That's right. And you bringing your seat to how much? That's right. At least. And make that $200 cash. Somebody told me the other day, they say, Prophet Tom, they say your check so good, well, I got to have it. They say, Prophet Tom, your checks be so good that when you write them, the bank bounce. Not the check bounce, the bank bounce. Well, that's some money there in the church. Amen. Lift your hands. Say, be it unto me. Amen. Amen. You want to have so much money that the bank run out of money when you come there. Come on, come on, come on. Hey. Come on, I decree you're going to get some supernatural money this week. I'm talking about this week. Y'all, I'm serious now. Y'all think I'm just talking. I say this week you're going to get some supernatural money. Amen. The tribe of Joseph is hosting convocation. They're holding children's church doing convocation. So if you are a parent, you got to sign up to serve. You're one of the servants. If you are a parent, the tribe of Joseph would like to meet with you briefly after service tonight in the back of the sanctuary. Say amen. amen. Also, the tribe of Benjamin is selling decals tonight for five dollars. They can be purchased from Sister Vanessa tonight in the fellowship hall. So they say when you put it on your car, this is the way it's gonna look. Okay, on the car. So, amen. Amen. The marriage ministry is selling banana pudding cups tonight for three dollars. And by the way, I was gonna put y'all on a fast this week, but the Lord told me to just let you enjoy convocation this week. So, Amen. You better know that's God. You better know that's God. Amen. But I'm gonna wear you out soon as convocation is over. So they'll be selling banana pudding cups for three dollars, and the tribe of Zebulon. Is gonna have kettle corn. Well, what's kettle corn? What's that? It's, I know it's popcorn, but it's sweet. Okay, kettle corn, salty sweet. Okay, for one dollar. Amen. Say hallelujah. All right. Um, also, at the church we're going to, on the inside of the church, they have a shop okay and so due to the coffee shop the first row of parking spots that are closer to the door are reserved so don't park in those spots because those are for the coffee patrons am I making sense right so those who are in the, the front part those parking spots are right there in the front they don't want us to park there because that is for the coffee shop amen we are excited now listen this week Convocation that you be a part of because you know what we got to do. We're coming in the right spirit. I'm ready to receive. I want you to wear your best. I want you to look your best. Smell your best. Wear your best. Look at three people right. Say, all right, you got to get it together. Got to get it together. Amen. If you didn't get your hair done none this year, I want you to get it done this week. Amen. Amen. Deacon Thomas, I'm going you trust God. We're going to trust the beautician. Say amen. Amen. Say hallelujah. We're going to do whatever we need to do. We're going to give greatly to the Lord for um, what he's doing. Um, Pastor Abbott, when I was over down there in Chicago, my God, I probably thought of a storm this weekend, church. Uh, I mean, that thing was on. I mean, it was try to come in on Friday and his son is fasting on Monday and at his fasting heart is 
41 years old right here in this time. Amen. Um, I had a little away from the screen in order to be attentive to this year. Make sure we get our health together. And make sure we're eating right. Didn't I tell y'all that? Okay, so let's make sure we get ourselves together and make sure we eat well. We'll try to do a little bit of planning and make some notes on the front end. Any other? Okay, how many people know you are not supposed to bury your children? Amen. You're not supposed to. You see, Jesus buried his son so you don't have to bury yours. I took care of everything for Brother Oak died when he started. I told him when he told me he died, I said, you should have done that. I said, you have to do it. You should have raised him up. Don't be going to the funeral and tell me you're going to raise him up again. He, he was dead a while. He gone. Where's he at? But my God, when they right there, as soon as they die, you, 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 you just beat them up. You know, the last thing that leaves is your hearing. So you go in that ear and say, you better get up right now in the name of Jesus. How many people know it's not about how loud you are now? Some of y'all loud and ain't got no power. Okay, you get in that ear and command them to get up in Jesus' name. You take authority. You have power to speak to dead stuff. Man, I got such a boldness now. Sitting there in the service on um, Friday night, and I was getting ready to close it out. And I walked up to the woman. I said, Woman, God just healed your body. He said, Ah, and it fell out. I said, Woman, God just healed your body. I said, Whatever that sickness is for, I said, You can go home, you can cancel your funeral, you ain't got to prepare for it because you healed. I said, God said, Cancer ain't going to take you out. The doctors, now I'm going to be honest with you, she didn't look sick. You know, she, uh, you know, she looked healthy. Healthy. No, healthy. Yeah. But my God, she started shouting. The doctors had already told her she was going to be out of here by January. Amen. And not only they told she was going to be out of here by January, but they also, she had also told me she had, she had already got my obituary in. She said, I'm going home to burn my obituary. One word from God can change your life. Isn't that right? That year was on. I was, I was calling out phone numbers and all. I said, who number is such and such and such and such and such? And such? And I said, man, I can't even remember the number. Amen. For the supernatural. I was glad to see I still got it because I didn't know I still had it. You know, I don't be doing that no more. Hey Amen. We're praying for those families in El Paso, Texas, and in Dayton, Ohio. I mean, just two mass shootings in less than 15 hours. It's praying time, church. And uh, we believe God uh, will keep them in the stand. I think they had one in El Paso yesterday and then this morning. Right there in Dayton, Ohio. I think about nine people got killed this morning. Fifteen injured. I think yesterday maybe fifteen people got killed. Something like that. No getting out of here. But how many people know? You can throw me overboard, but I got a hiding place. And he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide. Look at somebody say, it won't come not my dwelling. You believe that? I say, do you believe that? Sing it, y'all. Oh, Lord, we bless your name. I 
bless your name. We lift our voices to say for your goodness and your mercy. Hey, for your goodness, yeah. And your mercy toward us. Hey, we offer, we offer. Come on. You are worthy. Come on. You are worthy. Come on. Oh, honor. Worthy of the praise. Praise. For your and your mercy, thank you for your goodness, for your goodness, and your mother, oh, she can. Hey, for your goodness, come on, and your mercy, hey, we offer, we are. Pray one more time. You are worthy. You are worthy. Come on. Oh, honor. Worthy of our praise. Your mercy, hey, for your goodness, come on. You've been so good to me, and your mercy, hey, you've been so good, and your mercy, hey. Let my heart be the temple of your heart. Lift your hands and sing that joy. Feel the world. Come on. Tell him, let me be a holy habitation. is pleased to dwell. I love it. I love Oh, Lord. To know your glory. I want to give the sun tides of rain. Hey, fill this temple. With your spirit. Why? Once again, once again, everybody, everybody, say, feel the simple. With your spirit, once again. Clap those hands if you love him. Hug three people and tell them I'm excited about your future. You may be seated. For you have done so much for 
bless and I will bless your oh, I will bless your yeah, and I will bless forever that's all been in my spirit all week glory to your name Glory to your name. Tell them y'all. Jesus all over this room. Amen. Don't we serve a good God, church? Of course, as you know, we've been talking about the gospel. Romans chapter 1, for I'm not ashamed of the what? Come on, come on. I'm not ashamed of the what? I told you that word gospel is good news, right? But it's not just good news. It's what kind of news? Too good to be true news. That's Romans chapter 1, dealing with the world. And I said, you don't have to preach to people. And tell them how bad they are, because everybody already knows how bad they are. Amen. Praise God. You felt that, mama? Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. 
the stars, they're, they're busy. Uh, killers, you always feel it at the most awkward moments, you know. The Lord don't ever hit her when he hitting everybody else. Amen. All right. But anyway, so uh, good news. Somebody shout, good news. That's what the gospel is. It's good news. It's not tearing people down. It's not beating people up. It's not telling them how dirty they are because the Bible declares that the wrath of God has already been revealed against all unrighteousness. Amen. That's, that's good news. Good news to know that Jesus died for you. Everything that you had to do, he already took care of. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of that. I came to the second chapter of the book of Romans. Chap Romans chapter 1 is to the world. And Romans chapter 2 is to the religious. And I showed you that Romans chapter 2 said, listen here, anytime you point the finger at anybody and tell them what they're doing wrong, you condemning yourself. Because everybody in here got a problem. Come on, tell your neighbor, you and your mama. You and your mama. Yeah, that's right. Everybody in here. <laughs> everybody in here has a problem. Everybody in here has something in your life. Because the law of God is perfection. I had a conversation with a man of God this morning. He came by the church. He said, Prophet Tom, when you die, he said, the only way you're going to make heaven when you die. He said, the only way you're going to make heaven when you die is when you die, you got to be perfect. I said, well, brother, ain't nobody going to heaven. Ain't nobody going to heaven. Amen. He said, ain't nobody be going to heaven because if it takes perfection. I love you, Pastor Butler. Amen. Amen. Y'all see when he walked out like that, that means somebody's going to get in trouble. Say that. You know, that's that dignified one. <laughs> that's that trouble walk. Okay. But Romans chapter 2 says that you're condemned. No one in here is perfect. No one in here got it all right. As a matter of fact, the Bible said there is none righteous. No, not one. So Romans 1 is talking to the world. Romans chapter 2 is dealing with the religious, letting you know that no matter how wonderful you think you are, whenever you point the finger at somebody else, it's going to do nothing but point right back to you because we all in here have things that we're struggling with. But then you get to Romans, the third chapter, and it levels the playing field. And I really want you all to see that. But that's something that most of us in here, because I, I, I feel 95% of us, uh, if not 100% of us, all fight. Since, since we were raised in church and we've been saved for any length of time, you fight a religious spirit. Yeah. I'm not religious. You think you're not. But if you ever, if you ever feel bad about anything that you do wrong and beat yourself up, you are religious. And you are living under the law because there is no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. Now, I know that's hard, a hard pill for some of us to swallow because we need a reason to feel justified. We need a reason to feel, I know I'm going to heaven because I did this and I did that and I did that. I'm telling you, all of that is wonderful and I think it's good to do. But none of that qualifies you for heaven. See how that religious spirit won't even let you say amen? It's okay. It's okay. None of that qualifies you for heaven. None of it. You're not drinking. You're not smoking. You're not lying. You're not conniving. All right? It's good for you. It's good for your righteousness, but it has nothing to do with his righteousness. Romans chapter 1 is a problem with the world. Romans chapter 2 is a problem with the religious. But then he gets to the third chapter of Romans, and he levels the playing field and say, all have sinned. Make it somebody shout, all have sinned. All right, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. He says, so I don't care whether you're in church or out of church. Without me, you're a sinner. Amen. Amen. Whether you keep the commandments or don't keep the commandments, whether you dot every I, whether you don't dot every I, whether you're perfect, it doesn't matter. Whatever you want to say you are. Without me, everybody in here is flawed. Amen. Without Jesus, everybody in here, if you don't have Jesus in your life, you will be lost. I don't care if you live a perfect life. I don't care if you got it right. Don't never do nothing wrong. I promise you, in those 613 commandments, you're going to find something wrong. And James 2 and 10 say, if you offend in one, you offend in what? That's right. So the word of God says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But let's go to Romans chapter 4 verse 1. So we did Romans chapter 1. We did Romans chapter 2. We did Romans chapter 3. But let's go to Romans chapter 4 now. And the word of God says in Romans chapter 4. Don't y'all love the word of God? Amen. Some of y'all lying, but we're going to say it by faith. Amen. Romans chapter 4 is dealing with Abraham and David. And it's going to show you through the fourth chapter of Romans that Abraham, praise God, 
was justified by faith. You got to stay with me now. He's using a parallel of Abraham. He's telling us that we're righteous. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We've all messed up. All right. But the only thing that makes you righteous is what Jesus did. All right. I gave him my sin. He gave me his what? Righteousness. So you get to the fourth chapter of the book of Romans, and he begins to talk about Abraham, how Abraham is justified by faith. It is not his performance that caused him to be chosen, but it was his faith, and Abraham did not get what he deserved. Look at Romans chapter 4, verse 1. He says, look, what shall we say then? That Abraham, our father, as pertaining to the flesh, have found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. Basically, the question is saying, listen, I don't care what good Abraham does. None of his works is good enough. It's not your performance. You can dot every I. He could have crossed every T, but none of that will have qualified him. Look at verse 3. He said, go back to verse 2. I want to see that again in verse 2. For if Abraham were justified by works, he has well to glory. And he would have had something to glory, but whatever he did would not have worked before who? God. But look at verse 3. He says, for what saith the scripture? Abraham believed who? And it was counted unto him for what? Let's go to Genesis chapter 15. So him believing God is what made him righteous, not his performance. Genesis chapter 15 verse 5. And he brought him forth abroad and said, look now toward heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto them, so shall thy seed be. Look at the next verse. And he believed in the Lord. And it and he counted it to him for what? So his belief in what God told him made him righteous. What's the belief? Look at the stars, Abraham. If you can count them, that's how your seed going to be. Abraham believed that. And because he believed what God said, God said, you know what, boy? You righteous. Had nothing to do with his performance because we all in here know that Abraham wasn't perfect. Didn't he lie about his wife? Not one time, but twice. He wasn't perfect. The law said in Leviticus 18 that it was an abomination to marry your half-sister. Guess what Abraham did? Married his half-sister. That was against the law. But none of that disqualified him. Come on, y'all got to get that now. He did what the law told him not to do, but God didn't hold that against him. Give me verse 4, Romans chapter 4, verse 4. He's trying to show you something. Even though he didn't keep the law, he was still righteous. Why was he righteous? Because he believed God. Romans 4 and 4. Now for him that worketh is a reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. God said, if you always working to be righteous, you're going to always feel like a slave. Trying to measure up. Trying to be perfect. Trying to do everything right. But look at verse 5. He said, but to him that worketh not, but believeth on him, glory to God, that justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted for what? So the person who said, it's not about my works, but I believe God, God said that person is justified and righteous. Now that's good preaching. Look at three people and say, that's good news. I got to believe on him that justified the ungodly. God imputes righteousness Without me working. Me work. Me working don't make me righteous. I work because I'm righteous. But I don't work to be righteous. Does that make sense? I'm not working. Oh, I got to work for the Lord. If I 
work with him, God will look at me and say, well, I'm so pleased with you. All of that is really because you are focused on yourself and not what Jesus did for you. See, that kills religion. What? What? All of this have to do? No! Not to be righteous. Not for God to love you. Now, you will have works of righteousness, but it's on the end and not the beginning. See, most of y'all been working to the cross instead of working from the cross. Am I making sense? All right. So look at somebody and say, I'm righteous. righteous. Say it again. I'm righteousness. All right. God imputes righteousness without works. Basically, uh, everything you do wrong, uh, let's say like this. God issues a credit card. Do you know that when you pay a credit card, right, when, when you use a credit card, Don't you pay for whatever you're going to pay for? Hell, hello? But is it paid for? It's imputed. Come on, y'all. Y'all missing that. You get a credit card, right? That's going to cost $2,000. You got a spending limit. Now, Jesus, when he went to Calvary, what they are doing when you swipe that card is they're imputing the they're imputing the payment, but you still got to come back and pay it. Does that make sense? So you are operating as if you got it, even though it ain't yours. You know, you get your car, you get it on credit. How many folks know while you're around there telling folks that's your car, as long as you got a payment, it ain't your car. You don't believe it, don't pay it and see don't the people who own it come get it. Am I making sense? What God did was put righteousness on your account without you working for it. So even though I don't have the maleko shot, even though I don't have the money to pay it, he put righteousness on my account and it gives me access to everything that righteousness possess. But look at God. Not only did he put it on my account, not only did he front the money, but he gonna pay it too. Now, it's one thing when somebody fronts you the money, because usually when you front it, you got to pay them back. But Jesus said, I am the propitiation. Glory to God. I'm the payment. Glory to God. I'm the payment. Glory to God. My God, I felt that, brother. All right, are y'all getting that? So Jesus put righteousness on your books. You righteous. You didn't work for it. All you have to do is believe you got it. Hallelujah. Verse 6. Even as David also described the... Y'all, I'm finna get happy. Y'all still finna get happy. Even as David also described the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputed righteousness without works. Saying, blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven. Verse 8. Whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the law will not impute sin. The prophets of the old covenant will sin in the future. They say there's something that God is working on. That a man is going to be able to do wrong, but God ain't going to hold it against him. David was prophesying and say, blessed is the... Y'all ain't catching what I'm saying now. The Bible says that the prophet searched 
they searched for what we had. They, they could not relate to that, but there was a prophetic word being released where they would say, blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. They saw a faith coming that did not have to be earned. This thing was in the future now, because yeah. as far as they were concerned, remember now, under the old covenant, if they wanted anything, they had to work for it. They had a system that I had to do this, to do that, I had to keep all these laws, all right? But God, they, they say, uh-uh, there's a man coming. Don't know who he is, but there's some kind of man coming that the Lord is not going to hold his sin against him. They saw a relationship that we would have God's righteousness and he would not hold our sin against us. They didn't have that under the old covenant. Under the old covenant, he said, your sin have separated us. Jesus, Malakoshia, Jesus couldn't get close to them because of sin. And wherever there was sin, he had to back up. You remember the high priest when he got ready to go into the Holy of Holies? If there was sin committed, what would happen to him? He would drop dead. God couldn't bring the presence of sin. But they saw something coming where there was going to be a people that was going to be able to have relationship with God even though they weren't perfect. And David said, blessed is that man. He said, that's a blessed man there. He said, I, I, I wish I was able to live under that dispensation. Blessed is the man. Somebody say, blessed is the man. God has forgiven all your sins. I can't tell you on that. I know it's hard for you to get in your spirit. Tell your neighbor, my sins are forgiven. Come on, left and the right. Say, my sins are forgiven. I said all of them. Y'all hear that, right? I said, your sin was forgiven before you committed it. forgiving you of the sin that you haven't even committed yet. The devil is, uh-uh, uh-uh. I gotta put it on the blood. I, I, gotta, I gotta repent for it. I, I gotta say, Lord, I'm sorry. Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the Jesus has already forgiven you of your sins, past, present, and future. You better hope he did because he only died one time. If he, had, if, if he hadn't forgave you of it, he would have. See, y'all got to understand. When Jesus' blood was shed, it was not shed just for the people who were born. That's why the blood had to come out the body. Y'all missed it. Did they pierce him in his side and two things came out? Blood and water. All right. So, so as long as Jesus was here, he did not only, let's go down, folks, go down now. So as long as Jesus was here, he did not just forgive sin for the people who were already born. Because if he did, there would be no redemption for us. Because we weren't born yet. Come on, y'all got to get this now. I said, I wasn't born yet. When Jesus died over 2,000, how old are you, baby? Come on, you, you, you a little more than that. You better get ready. All right. That's over 2,000 years ago that he died. That means that Jesus' blood had to cover the sins of people who were not born. Which means the sin that you were going to commit was nailed at Calvary. Y'all ain't getting that. See, I know that kills some of y'all because some of y'all's salvation is hanging in the balance. I don't have a salvation hanging in the balance. If I mess up tomorrow, it's under the blood. It's under the blood. It's under the blood. It's under the blood. I say it's under the blood. I say it's under the blood. If I mess up at 8.31, I cast out a devil at 8.32. Hey! Because it's under the blood. It's under the blood. Y'all quiet in here, church. 
He died once. And David saw it coming. You get a chance, read Hebrews, the 10th chapter. You got to read the whole chapter of the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 10 is a very powerful text. But he only died one time. Go back to Romans chapter 4. Okay, verse 9. Look at verse 9. He said, Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not presume. But look at verse 9. Cometh this blessedness then upon the circumcision only? Or upon the uncircumcision also? Okay. Do this just believe, do this just belong to Jews? Or do it belong to Gentiles? Do it belong to the holy? Or the unholy? The perfect or the unperfect? For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham. For what? Righteousness. Genesis chapter 15. I just told y'all a minute ago that he said in Genesis 15, Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as what? Now, when you get a chance, read and get home. The 17th chapter of the book of Genesis. And in Genesis the 17th chapter, Abraham got circumcised. Usually, you get the circumcision, and the circumcision is what made you righteous. But Abraham got called righteous first. And then after he was called righteous, he got circumcised. I do not work to be righteous, but I work because I am righteous. Are y'all get what I'm saying? Lay hands on yourself again. Say, I'm righteous. Don't say it like you're scared. Say, I'm righteous. And how many people know that circumcision was not a permanent thing? See, y'all not, y'all not getting it. Circumcision was private. They circumcised your private part. That was private. Why did he do that? Because he was trying to show us that salvation is nothing we boast about. It's a private thing. And most of you boast in it because you're taking the credit for it. Because you don't want that I'm this and I'm that. Y'all better hear me today. I'm this and I'm that and I don't do this and I got to do this for God. You don't recognize that every time you do that, you insult God for what he did at Calvary. Everything you are, you are because of what he did. Don't that kill religion? Don't that make your little religious self mad? Good, good. If you had to fulfill rules to be accepted, Abraham wouldn't have received it. Because he wasn't circumcised. And when Paul gave his accolades on who he was, he said, I come from the tribe of Benjamin, stock of Israel. He said, I'm circumcised on the eighth day. That was a big thing. Circumcision was a sign of covenant. When you got circumcised, that means you was in covenant. All right? But here's Abraham had not been circumcised had not done all the rules that he was supposed to do, yet God already called him righteous. Because David and Abraham were righteous before they ever did anything. Look at verse 10. How was it then reckoned? When he was in circumcision, he was reckoned righteous. Well, when did he get reckoned righteous? When he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? Not in circumcision is when I called him righteous because he wasn't circumcised yet. I made him righteous in what? Uncircumcision. Look at verse 11. Come on. And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith, which he had yet been uncircumcised. Did y'all get that? That he might be the father of all them that believe. The reason he had to not be circumcised to be righteous is God saw us who were children who had not been circumcised. And he said, I had to make him the father of all them that believe, though they be not circumcised, that righteousness, what? 
might be imputed unto them. Somebody say, I got it too. Look at the next verse. Are y'all in a rush? And the father of circumcision for them, watch this, who are not of circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had being yet uncircumcised. I'm trying to show y'all that the circumcision was only a symbol of what had already taken place. Just like water baptism. Water baptism can't save you. I don't see why people think if water baptism saves you, all you got to do is get somebody to get in the water. I mean, y'all, y'all got to think about it. If a per- oh, ooh, you just get them down in Jesus' name. Okay. Then that means everybody, all you got to do is say, come on, let, let me give you a bath real quick. I'm going to give you a bath. You wouldn't even have to explain Jesus. If the water and the name, all you got to do is get them in water. Oh, you say, no, 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 no. Repent, comma. Acts 2.38 says, repent, comma. Look at that in the Greek. Repent, comma. That word repent is an imperative. But the word be baptized in the Greek is a passive imperative, which means it does not have the same power of repent. Repent first. After you repent, you become a candidate for baptism. Say amen, church. Say amen. I don't live right to be righteous. And I won't get y'all. Even if you call yourself living right, if you living right for the wrong motive, you still ain't doing nothing. Give me Romans 2.25. Give me Romans 2.25 and get you some time. Can I have about 10 more minutes, y'all? I hope somebody growing. I hope somebody being free from religion. Look at three people around you and say, that word getting me, that word getting me. Watch this. For circumcision verily profiteth if you keep the law. But if you be a breaker of the law, your circumcision is made uncircumcision. Therefore, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law, shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? And shall not the uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it fulfill the law, judge thee, who by the letter and circumcision doth transgress the law? Keep going. For he is not a Jew which one is done outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh, but he is a Jew, which is one what? Inwardly. And circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit, not in the letter, who praise is not of men. Some of y'all live right because it makes you feel good. Amen. Always, I ain't did this in 20 years. I ain't done that. And see, and you're boasting in yourself. You don't recognize God said, if you're doing it for that reason, your motive is wrong. Everything you do got to be centered around him. Even when you testify of his keeping power, you got to give that credit to him. Amen. Because I can't keep myself. Oh, come on. Come on, church. Look at your whole world. Say, I cannot keep myself. I can't do this by myself. Hey. But he will keep that which you commit unto him. Against that day. Say amen to that. So as you look at the book of Romans, it's a masterpiece. Go back to Romans chapter 4. It's a masterpiece on the grace of God. Hey, that's right. You felt that, Brother Thomas? Amen. I love it. I love it. 
Sister Joy, this is part three of the message. I'm going into part three right now, probably. So you can put that in your notes. But lay hands on yourself. Say, I'm righteous. I'm righteous. Now, look at this. Look at this. I want to help you understand. Because when you tell people this, you might have thought they just made up. You ain't telling me we don't have to eat fruit and all that. You ain't telling me we can do that, do that, do that. Yeah, okay. Let me show you what Romans 4.16 says. It's on one two. Because the law worketh wrath. For where no law is, there is no transgression. Okay. The law was not given to help you overcome sin. The law was given for sin to overcome you. I did, I did not want you to keep it. I wanted you to see that it was impossible for you to keep the law. So that's why I gave you all of them laws, not for you to try to keep them, but for you to recognize you can't keep them. I gave Adam one law, and I showed him that he couldn't even keep that. Glory to God. Because your nature, your sin nature, always does what is told not to do. You can be a parent. You can be a parent. You can tell your children, don't mess with that rock down there. They could have been playing the whole time. They didn't even recognize the rock was there. They was doing whatever they want to do. But the minute you tell them, don't mess with that rock, you go back up there and look out the window. They Say amen. amen. Say amen. amen. Married man. Married man. Married man. Temptation is stronger after marriage. You think marriage going to make you do right? No. Why? Before marriage. I want you to see this. Before marriage, you didn't have no limits. You were free. You're married now. You got limits. Listen, now you got a wife at home. You got a husband at home. You can never say anything. You don't have no problems at home. Guess what? Everybody thinks that you should go out there something on your own. Let me tell you something. You can have a wonderful wife. You can have a wonderful husband. Everything could be going right. But something about flesh. It's never satisfied. Am I right? Are you folks thinking marriage going to help you? It ain't. Oh, Lord, send my husband. Oh, Lord, send my wife. Oh, geez, I got this passion. I'm burning. Oh, Lord, you need to help me, baby. The burn ain't going to go nowhere once you get married. We always want what we're not supposed to have. Because the law worketh wrath. But where there is no law, there is no what? Transgression. First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 56 says that what the law did was it strengthened sin in its battle against you. The strength of sin is the law. So when the law came, it strengthened sin's battle against you. Give me 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 7. The law was not a ministration of life. It is the Ten Commandments. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 7. But it's a ministration of what? Come on, ministration of what? Yeah. Written and engraven in what? And that's me, the Ten Commandments. Those are the only laws that have been written in stone. He said that was not a ministration of life. It was a ministration of death. Look at verse 9. Not only was it a ministration of death, but verse 9 tells you of the same chapter that it was a ministration of condemnation. The law was supposed to make you feel guilty and condemned. But Romans 8 says there is therefore now no condemnation. Hallelujah to them that are in Christ Jesus. God is not condemning anybody in the New Testament. 
If you feel condemned, you're under the law. Give me 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19. You don't, you ain't got to believe me. You believe the Bible. And you got a Bible, you don't believe it, throw it away. Look, to which God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto who? Look at this part. Not imputing their trespasses unto them. God said, I'm not holding your sins against you. If I did, you would never talk. You would never be able to have a conversation with me because you sin daily. Some of you, I, devil is a lie. I don't sin every day. Use a lie. First John 1 say, if we say we have no sin, we are liar and we deceive ourselves. But God was in Christ. Reconciling us, not imputing their trespasses against them. Romans chapter 3 verse 19, I'll show you that. Verse 19 says that God gave us the law. Why did he give us the law? That every mouth may be stopped. He took excuses away from us. Say amen. amen. The law was given on purpose. When you see me all you rude. Anybody ever had a class or an assignment given and they told you all this stuff you had to do and you was training for something? And you saw everything you had to do. And guess what it made you? I can't do that. You ain't even tried and you felt defeated. <laughs> Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. As a matter of fact, when, whenever, they're trying, whenever they are trying to uh, sell to you a weight loss pill, a weight loss tea, you're tired of walking on the treadmill and doing all of that running and doing all I got a solution for you. And guess what it make you do? Oh, I'm going to get that. Especially when you don't like to work. God showed us all of those commandments because he wanted you to feel defeated. Because once I felt defeated, it pushed me to him. It pushed me to his mercy. People was comparing themselves to each other. They was comparing, look at what this person did, look at this person. So God said, okay, I'm going to kill the comparison. And I'm going to give a law. The law is going to be my standard. It don't change. No matter what your situation is, if I say the speed limit is 50, whether you're going to the hospital, whether you're going home, if the speed limit is 50, guess what it is? 50. That was the law. So the law came so that people wouldn't say, well, the reason I did this was because of this. Every time people would do wrong, they had excuses. So God say, I'm going to set a law, and once I set the law and the standard, everybody who don't keep it is what? Guilty. Get the purpose of the law was. And that law Hold you to Christ. Now, look at verse 15, Romans chapter 4. I'm almost done, y'all. I see y'all ready to go. Romans chapter 4, verse 15. Because the law worketh wrath, for where no law is, there is no what? Look at the next verse. Therefore, it is a faith that it might be by grace to the end the promise might be sure to all the seed. Not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us, what? Oh. Verse 17, as it is written, I may be a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God that quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they, y'all got to get this now, y'all got to get this. That's verse 17. You got to understand now, a promise is coming to Abraham. And God tells Abraham, Abraham, you going to have a child. Through you, the whole world going to be blessed. Abraham, watch this, starts trying to work 
to manifest what God said is. Y'all, 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 y'all missed it. And that's what y'all do. God say you righteous and you don't believe it until it looked like it. So it didn't look like he was going to have no child because he had a wife whom womb was dead. So he tried to do it himself by getting with Hagar. And anytime you do it yourself, it's going to cause a problem. Y'all better hear me today. Lay hands on yourself and say, I'm righteous. Say, I'm holy. Now God told him, your, your child coming. Your child coming through your wife. But he tried to make it happen through Hagar. I already made you a promise. Give me Genesis 17. Hurry up. Genesis 17. Hurry up. Genesis 17. Am I helping somebody? And, and when Abel was 90 years old, 99. Lord appeared to Abraham and said, I'm the Almighty God. Walk before me. Be perfect. Verse 2. And I'm going to make a covenant between me and you. A covenant, not a contract, a covenant. And I'm going to multiply thee exceedingly. And Abraham fell on his face. God talked to him. What did he say? As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee. And I'm going to make you a father of many nations. Neither shall your name anymore be called Abram, but you're going to be called Abraham, for a father of many nations. Now, there go the promise right there. Abram, you're going to be a father of many nations. What? I'm going to follow many nations. My wife is dead. Ain't going to happen. I say, you say, you righteous, you holy. I did something yesterday that ain't right. I, I, I ain't say, see, now you say God is a lie. Because you are determining what you are based on actions. Father God, you preaching. Say it again. Say, I'm righteous. God called him a father before he had a child. Y'all missed that. I said, God called him a father before he had a child. And God calls you righteous before you act like it. God called you holy even when you look crazy. I don't care if you got a cigarette in your mouth. If you're born again with that cigarette in your mouth, declare, I am righteous. Hey, hallelujah. Come on, y'all got to get this now. See, stop saying what you ain't and say what you are. I don't care if you drunk beer before you walked in here. With the bit, keep on declaring, I'm the righteousness of God. I know it don't look like it. No, I ain't acting like it. But I'm going to call those things which be not as though they are. Yay! Glory oh, to God. I'm righteous. Got to get that. I'm righteous. Come on, say that again. Say, I'm righteous. And how many people know you ain't got to be scared to say that? Let nobody try to condemn you. Baby, you can't hold nothing over my head. I don't care what you saw me do. He forgave me. Hell, I'm all tired. Don't care what you heard. I'm still righteous. Romans chapter 4. Verse 18. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. I know y'all ready to go. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of what? According to that which was spoken. So should I see. Verse 19. Here we go. Being not weak in faith. He considered not his own body. If I had time, I could just preach on that verse right there. He considered not 
That's why most of you in here can't get healed. Because you keep considering your body. He never considered his own body. He never did. He didn't think about his body being dead. I keep telling you right now, if I was to walk up to Mother Green and say, Mother Green, Mother Green, you're going to have a baby. <laughs> now, she'll believe it, right? But most of us will look on Google. And say, when the last time somebody, oh, had a baby? I'm trying to get you to understand something. See, that's why I keep telling you, I'm not trying to be funny. But even when you, even when y'all become some God that told you to step out and go get a house, you can't consider your FICO score. See, I'm trying to help somebody in here. You see, because see, people, have, all right, now, you got to use common sense. You know, you can get out there and faith if you want to, but you know you can't afford Baby, I know I can't afford it. If I could afford it, I didn't need faith. That's why I'm believing God, because I know I can't afford it. But the God I serve is able to do it exceedingly. Y'all understand that? That's why a lot of times y'all go to these y'all go to these seminars, these financial seminars. And it sounds good, but it's not good because they don't operate in faith. And the carnal mind is not subject to the law of God. Neither indeed can be. Am I making sense? So when you go to town, like you believe in God, and you hear there's a young lady that I, I spoke to. She said, uh, she, she was diagnosed with HIV, HIV, and I spoke to the lady. And I said, uh, you know, said, doctor, she said, yeah. three months and they kind of tell you you have to take your medicines but as far as they're concerned you cannot take your medicine you can be healed of that but what can cure the flu you know giving other people the virus and if you refuse to take your medicine a lot of people are insured by the DOD they'll drop you okay because you're refusing to, to take the medicine but it is mandatory It's been eight months. She heard me speak this day to her. She said, I believe God. I said, you do? She said, I believe God. I said, I don't be trying to impress Papa Sean and everybody else now. She said, now you believe God. You, you have to walk this thing out. You can't be HIV. You don't play with HIV. I mean, you talking something, you heal. You heal. You ain't got to walk this thing. But that means your body going your body going to do whatever it wants to do. You say you're walking this thing out. Let's walk this thing out. It, it, it's been eight months. She took her medicine. Eight months. She got what the doctor told me. It's not important. I manage it. And I said, you hit me with the day that I was supposed to take it. So I say, well, go on and order it. But don't take it. She said, well, I, I did my report. Did you bad news? That's not the report you believe. See, see, I'm trying to help y'all. Because see, some of y'all believe until you go to the doctor and the doctor say you still got it. Doctor, I don't listen to you. He was wounded for my, come on, talk to me in here. And with his strikes, I am. Well, I believe this. I believe this. I believe this. The devil fights me a lot, used to fight me a lot with headaches. And I was anointed to get goody powders, DC powders, stand back. They get rid of it in five minutes. How many people know when you got a bad headache, it's easy to go get what you know works? See, Holy Ghost told me today, he said, you stumbled on me on the Sunday. Y'all 
still going to take his medicine, right? So the pain hits your body. But see, the more medicine you take, the more your body becomes immune to it. Now, you keep on taking that medicine, right? Keep on taking it, all right? After a while, you're going to take it, and it ain't going to do nothing. You got to up your dosage. And then if you take too much medicine, then you can get poisoned, you can die, commit suicide. But how many people know you can't die from upping your scriptures? Hey! Corey! You better up that word on that devil. I said you better up that word on it. Oh, it's a dog. I said you better up that Bible. I say the word works. I say the patatato. I say the word works. Slap three people and say, God said you heal. Most of y'all get discouraged because you consider the doctor. Whatever they say, you consider it. You got a lawsuit, you consider it. And when you consider what they say, you accumulate unbelief. I told you, you don't have a faith problem. You got an unbelief problem. much against us, KCC, when it comes to us building our church. We got so we got so much warfare. We got stuff coming against us that y'all don't need nobody. That don't move me. He is the author. And the finisher. Look at somebody and say, God got this thing under control. Tell them, I don't know what's going on. But I do know this. If God said it, wish I had a church in here. Y'all sit down. Look at somebody and say, I believe God. You, y'all, you, you got to get so fixed. Glory to God. Have such a made up mind that folk look at you and be saying, have you lost your mind? Do you know what's coming against you? Do you know what they saying about you? I don't know what they're saying because I don't even consider it. I don't even give that attention. But what I do give attention is the God I serve. He's able. I need you to snap three people and say, he's able, he's able. considered not I don't consider this stuff I be telling my staff don't tell me nothing folk tell you stuff and it'll mess with your faith amen Supernaturally lose weight. See there, see there, see there. See, you're looking at the scale. I believe God. Look at somebody and say, that weight going to drop up off it. Somebody going to pay my vehicle off. Somebody going to pay my house off. Any day now, something, 
supernatural. Y'all sit down. I'm not ready. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Sit down. We're almost there. Watch this. I'm done, y'all. We got to get out of here. He didn't consider his own body. I know, I, I know, let me tell you something. Do you know Charlotte is the worst place to live when you got allergies? My whole family got it. I refuse it. I don't even know. They be talking about Ali. I say, what is that? I don't receive it. I don't accept it. I don't accept the diagnosis. Are y'all hearing me? I got a pain that's shooting me down my leg. I, it ain't no muscle. It ain't no bone. If I was a doctor, I'd probably give me sciatic nerve or something. It's a, guess what? I told sciatic. What is that? Except that's the, I was all in the bed stretching. Mm, I mean, you got your leg. Is you? Is something wrong with you? <laughs> Sciatic nerve don't belong to me. <laughs> Arthritis don't belong to me. <laughs> that ain't the key I was in. You went high with me. Diabetes don't belong to me. <laughs> Sickness don't belong to me. Poverty don't belong to me. Depression is not mine. God made me a promise. Everything that he told me is going to come to pass. Shake your neighbor. You ain't shook nobody. Shake your neighbor. You ain't shaking them right. Shake your neighbor. Said neighbor, God told me to tell you tonight, I don't care what it looks like, what it feels like, what it seems like. If God said it, he going to bring it to pass. Yeah. He going to manifest it. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. We ain't there yet. He considered, sit down, sit down, two minutes. He considered not his own body. A hundred years old. That was good. Neither, not, not only did he not consider his own body, but he didn't consider the deadness of Sarah's womb. So basically he said, I know I'm jacked up, but my situation is also jacked up. But the God I serve, He's able. My God, I feel something in here. He's able. Hey, I feel something coming on. Shake somebody for the last time and say, neighbor, God told me to tell you everything going to be all right. Keep on praying. Keep on believing. Keep on confessing. Sooner or later, Sooner or later, sooner or later, it's going to work in your favor. Yeah! 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 Hey, look at three people say, you need to get ready, get ready, get ready. Hey! You ain't seen nothing yet. Tell somebody, I know it looks like I done lost my mind. I know you think I'm crazy. I know you don't understand why I'm coming to church. You don't understand why I'm giving. You don't understand why I'm praising. You don't understand how I can keep on giving God the praise when my back is against the wall. I can praise him. Ain't got no money. Ain't got no car. Ain't got no house. But the only reason can praise him is I got a feeling I got a feeling 
everything going to be all right. Grab your neighbor, rock them, and shake them, shake them, and rock them. I said rock them, and shake them, shake them, and rock them. And say, neighbor, be not dismayed. Whatever be time, God will. God will. God will. He gonna take care of you. Say yeah. Say yeah. Tell five people God gonna take care of you. Everything gonna be all right. All right. Tell somebody God got you. Tell them God got you. Tell them God got you. Don't talk with like you scared. Talk with confidence. Put your hand on your hip. Let your backbone slip. Tell the devil, God got everything under control. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, oh, magnify, magnify. Magnify, blow him up, magnify, open your mouth, celebrate him, love on him, because something is about to happen, something is about to change, something is about to shift, something is about to move, I can feel it, I can smell it, I can see it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody scream at him. It's already done. Already done. Already done. Already. 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 Hey, hey, hey. It's already done. It's already done. It's already done. Look at three people say it's already done. It's already done. Hey. Tell somebody it's already done. 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 Hey! Y'all. Hey, I let go and I let. 
that's when, tell your neighbor, say that's when, that's when, that's when, everybody dance, hey, hey. I said dance. There's a breakthrough in the dance. Hey! Only God could do. Only God could do. Only God could do. Only God can do. Do it, do it, do it. 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 Do it, do it, do it, do it. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Everybody dance! Hey. Hey. Grab your neighbor. Say neighbor. Say neighbor. Before this money is out, I'm decreeing over your life that God is getting ready to throw you a surprise party. Say, I don't know where it's coming from. But help me dance. Grab your face. Hey, hey. Wait. We gotta go, y'all. So look at somebody. And say, two are better than one. Say, I need you to help me. Because there's an overflow coming. And you're going to get my overflow. Grab your name and dance. Hey. Hey. Everybody dance. Say, look at three people and say, it's done. Hey, 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 hey. My God, I feel, hey, 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 hey. Praise him, baby. There's a prize on the inside. I can't keep to myself. So excuse me if I seem a little, maybe even strange, praises of, hey, that I say, hey.
será? Strange praise is a hey, can I say thank you? Hey, hey, week. It's time for high praise. High praise. Hey. Hey. Come on. If y'all gonna dance, I think I want to dance. I'm gonna give you 30 seconds. Come on, y'all. One, two, one, two, three. Somebody shout if you got victory. Be seated. if you love him tonight. I want y'all to know that you are righteous. Not, not because you work, 
but I work because I'm righteous. I'm falling deep and deep in love with Jesus. I am grateful for the things that you have done. Sing it to him, y'all. Come on. Yes, I'm grateful for the victories you won. I could, I could go on and on and on hey. about the Issues of my heart are the issues of my heart. Is gratefulness? Is gratefulness. If you're in this room and you've never met Jesus, if you, he's never come into your life, today I want to introduce you to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. If you're not saved, today is your day to walk into everything that I minister. This is when we stand up in the service. If you're not saved, today is your day to come get it right. If you're a backslider, he will, he will. He will give you brand new life. New life. Life's abundant. So come. So come. I dare you to come tonight. Standing on your feet, everybody. Come on. Come on. Come on to cry. To cry. If you're not saved, I want you to get up here. If you're a backslide, I want you to get up here. If you need a church home, you need the word fed to you on a weekly basis. Clap your hands. Somebody's coming, church. We, we are. Oh, my sister. Oh, my sister. He will, he will. He will give you brand new life. New life. life so come. So come. Is there anyone else not saved? Come on. Come on. Come on to cry. To cry. If you're not saved, get up here. What does that mean? You've never accepted Jesus. If you're a backslider, you need to get up here. If you need a church home, we believe there's no better place to be than KCC. If that's you, don't put off for tomorrow what you need to do today. Look on the left and the right of you right now. Ask the person, are you saved and know you're saved? See what they say. See what they say. See what they say. Ask another question. Say, are you in right standing with the Lord? See what they say. So Ask for another question. Say, what church you go to? Come, 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 Are you growing? Come, Are you growing? If not, say, what you're waiting on? There's no better place to be than KCC. One more time. Say, we offer Christ to you, everybody. We, we offer Christ to you. Oh, my brother. Oh, my brother. We, oh, we are, oh, oh, my sister, oh, my sister, he will, he will, he will give you a brand new life, new life, life above, clap your hands, somebody's coming, so, yeah, come on, come on, Say so, come, so, come. Hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. Say, come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah. So, so, come. Say, come on. Come on to cry. To cry. Church has orders all to begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Men don't almost see Canada by shot. 
Seti levi kiko la basha. Yandiri di osura basha kele mea. Reba da bo sura banda la bakata. Yelo lo bo basha. Shababa baba baby be osi. Se kobandi le miki kosha. Asharandi di osi da ba. E la mando lo moho si se ba. Holy be asha. Holy God, holy God, holy God. Holy God, holy God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost. So, come on, pray in the Spirit. Come on. So come, oh, come on, come on. Everybody say so come. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, come on. Come on to Christ, to Christ. Hallelujah. Clap those hands for Jesus. hands over to God you tonight. See Pastor Butler as soon as church is out. Clap those hands for Jesus. It's giving time at KCC. Look at somebody around you and say you're looking at a multi-millionaire. story to tell about some things that I wish but I'm here oh I'm here had some up and some down never to the good but I'm here oh I'm here had to wrestle on my own my in the wrong key. I'm here. Hey, I'm here too. May have some sky. I am here.
If you're tithing, sell all your feet all over the show. All my tithers. All my tithers. I'm a giver. I'm glad about it. I'm a tither. I'm glad. Bye bye. God from on high. Did I say give and tithe? Okay. I wouldn't trade it for nothing in the world. Because I am a giver. I expect increase. All things of my life. Holy Ghost. Right now, grant unto me rebates, refunds, money in the mail. Unexpected checks, increase in every area. Stocks, dividends, bonds, exchanges, real estate, contracts, lawsuits, settlements for my good. Bonuses, promotions, assets, royalties, prosperity, and posterity all the days of my life. My name is in somebody's will. God is talking to somebody about me and giving me uncommon favor with uncommon people in uncommon places. I ain't broke. I'll never be broke. I am a multi, multi, multi millionaire. Money! Coming to me! Alright, you may be seated. If you're on my right, take your seat, pass all the way down to the right. If you're on my left, take your seat, pass all the way down to the left, person at the end. Oh, I. Person at the end, stand up. I'm here. I am healed. With the stripes. With the stripes. I. Lift your hands. I feel money in here. Something awesome and incredible that only he will give the glory. God is doing something wonderful, incredible, and awesome. God is doing something wonderful. believe that, y'all. I told you I feel money in here. Something awesome and incredible that only he will get the glory. God is doing something wonderful. It's incredible and all. God Sing it, y'all. God is doing, God is doing something wonderful in me. I can't hear y'all. Something awesome, something awesome and incredible that only He will give the glory. God is incredible and awesome.
clap those hands for Jesus now. So what? So marvelous. God is doing it on the inside. Well, of course. of Simeon is selling steaks, drumsticks, cornbread dressing with choice of cream corn or cranberry sauce topping and H2O for food. Somebody said where? Did somebody say where? And H2O for four dollars. And that person is hungry. And uh, cake Pops, cake pops for one dollar. Gonna be out there having a great time. Y'all excited about this week? Yeah. That's Brother Thomas' son. He, uh, you miss me? Okay. You brought your grandma too? She, okay. Go. Come give me a hug. Come give me a hug. That's Brother Thomas' son. Come on, give Brother Thomas' son a great big God bless you. I love you. Okay, bye-bye. Okay. I know you see that now. If there's any word I want to give you today, I, I taught this a little bit this morning. I say this all the time. Stop making a God of your feelings. Y'all hear me? Y'all know I'm not on social media. Now you come off. You know. You know how I do. But um, I read something. Y'all ever heard of Heather Lindsay? She said I don't always trust my feelings. When I feel a certain way, I ask myself if the thoughts attached to that feeling are true. Because feelings come from thoughts. Every thought isn't good. Capture those bad thoughts and make the thoughts submit to God's word. Then your feelings will change. That's powerful. Amen. That's a word everybody in here. Do not make a God out of your feelings. Your feelings will have you paranoid, looking at folk crazy. It'll make you think somebody meant something they didn't mean. Prophet is warned she'll be here this week. She said she was calling me this week. She said, Yeah, I didn't answer. You know, that's my sister. Usually she calls my answer. I really didn't get the call. But she called me and talked about something. You don't love me and all this stuff. And I hung up on her. I don't have time to cater to that. See, if you get to a place, y'all. I, I, I'm not going to keep on having to validate whether I love you or not. Because a lot of y'all don't understand your rejection be talking. It don't be you talking, it be your rejection. When a person has been rejected, they expect to be rejected. 
or whenever somebody's in a relationship with somebody and a person is start acting funny on them, the minute somebody don't answer their call, they, they mind go right back to that trauma. And their trauma be thought. So she that was yesterday, I hung up on her. She called me today. She I hung up on her, I said, come out. I hung up. Come out. I hung up the phone. She called me today. Thank you. I'm sorry. I apologize. That was my trauma talking to you. I ain't got time to be sorry. Listen, if somebody in covenant with you, if you don't hear from them tomorrow, that don't mean they don't change. I wonder why I ain't heard from you. Busy! <laughs> Capital B. She said, why are you yelling at me? <laughs> I ain't yelling. I'm just typing. All right. But stop enshrining your feelings. Your, 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 your feelings are connected to your thoughts. When you go to thinking something, your feelings follow. Choose to believe that everything is okay. Everything is all right. Everything is okay. Everything is all good, and I will come thank you even if I could. Lift those hands. God's a good God. I love y'all so much. Amen. You might be saved. You don't know that song. You might be saved. Say amen. That's Jay Moss. We, we know him. He's still working. Amen. Lift those hands. I love y'all so much. I'm praying for you. Sky's the limit. Now, of course, we're not on a corporate fast, but I want you to do everything you can to keep your spirit in a position to receive from God this week. Amen. I want you this week to dress your absolute best. I told the women, I, I said, look, I, I want you to be happy with me. I was understanding. I want our women to dress up. I want you to look good. I want you to dress up, look nice. Love on each other, brothers and brothers and sisters. We get there on time. Now, we get there late, but we can get there late when we you and the uh, dough by yourself. Starting at 7, we're out of it at 10 o'clock every night. Amen. We thank God for what he's doing. Let's thank God for all of our first time people. Should they exit? If this is your first time here, exit to my left right now. We, they got something prepared for Come on, scream and clap for all of our first time. Amen. Hallelujah. As you know, this week we're also doing a live recording this year, so we have some great things in store. I only ordered, I only ordered so many copies of the CD. You better get it. Once you see them out there, uh, run for it. Go for it. We'll see what God will say. I'm so excited about what God's going to do on Thursday night. Let's see, we're just going to have a wonderful time in God. If you don't come here Tuesday, um, see me on Tuesday night at Thomas Field. Well, drive people and tell them I'm saved and I know I'm saved. I'll see y'all on Wednesday night. Adjutants. I need to see all adjutants and drivers. Two minutes. Less than two minutes. No, he's a fool. Everything is okay. Adjutants and drivers, quickly. Adjutants and drivers.
him the address of that church. Okay, drivers and adjutants real quickly. Right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you Wednesday night's order. Uh, then Wednesday, I will give you the rest of the week, who will be doing the, the day and who will be doing the evening, what it is you'll be doing. Uh, the adjutants for, for Wednesday, this is Wednesday night. Adjutants for Wednesday night is Brother Flo, Mississippi Chief, and Brother Venice. Brother Van, we always call you Brother Van. Why I always call you Brother Van? I'm sorry, Brother. I put you in there. Brother Van, okay. Um, the drivers are going to be. This is Wednesday. No, let me switch that. Driver. Driver. That's Wednesday. Because I don't think that there's a uh, sister being accommodated on Wednesday night, so I won't need a sister for an adjutant until Thursday morning. Wednesday, I'll give you the, the uh, instruction. Everybody who we went through the little training and whatnot, you'll be getting instruction on Wednesday. So, um, in addition, so that means you and you, Tuesday, need to get with me concerning getting these vehicles so that we can have them. Um, Sister Kay will give me where she's getting them from, et cetera, et cetera, what she needs for the week. Okay? All right. 